yesterday, pretty uneventful. We went back to the exact same coffee and cake place, which was equally fabulous. Um, me and Rob went whilst Anthony waited for the engineer to come to look at the engines, except he didn't turn up. So we think he's going to come tomorrow. It's very like Spanish, manana attitude, it'll be fine. And what else has happened today? I did a shitload of work on coal regs. <laughs> um, I'm really struggling to remember lights for night time. Um, so I've started making poems. I figure if I can make learning linear, then I will be able to remember it a little bit better. So we'll see how that goes. I made dinner tonight. We had a lamb curry, which was fabulous. I love making curries. I'm just very pleased they had all the stuff that I needed. And yeah, it's been a really nice day. Other than the weather, of course. But that should hopefully change soon. It was really cool talking to Anthony today at dinner, actually, as well, about all the racing that he's done. He's had people from like GB sailing crew for him in these races. Uh, he actually was the reason that Southampton have instated a ban that if you're over 25, you can't race in student games because he absolutely crushed it. Um, it's really nice talking to people who, about their passions. He lit up talking about sailing and his cars. It was just really nice. I felt like I got to know him more today, which was really lovely. We've also had squeaky sailing, um, where the autopilot's been on and the wheel is just like, it sounds like someone's screaming, it's a little bit disconcerting. Um, so today, Anthony cut up a bit of hose pipe and just stuck it under the steering column, um, so it's not rubbing on the plastic anymore, which I thought was really, really clever. And I also realised in the last entry, I didn't show you my room, and so I've got my own bathroom, I've got a bed that is bigger than a single, smaller than a double, I have loads of place to put all my things, and a bunch of charges. It's honestly ridiculous. Like, this boat has had some serious, some really bad engineering on this boat, like, just stupid things, which I will show you in a later episode. Um, but as far as the bedrooms go, you couldn't ask for anything else. So I've got hooks for all of my things, and I've got two lights by my bed. It's, it's really, really nice. We've had another very productive day today. We started off with cake again and we went and refreshed all of our food and things. So we've got plenty to be getting on with. Uh, then we came back down to the boat and first thing we did was finish off sorting the lazy jack out um, because we needed to put a block on it. We sent Rob back up the mast there to get that done, which probably only took about seven minutes through and through. Um, then the uh, outboard motor needed repositioning on its cradle. We dipped it into the water until it could float and just pulled it back to where it's supposed to be and secured it down. Then Anthony started splicing some line because we're going to put our spinnaker up and we essentially wanted it to work so that you can do it from the cockpit with just one man um, as opposed to always having to have someone help you furl and unfurl it. So he's created like essentially a big loop. And the reason it has to be a big loop as opposed to different lines knotted together is that this line needs to run through blocks and if we put knots in it's not going to be able to run fluidly through them. Here you can see where that line is going to spool around um, for the spinnaker and then that's just a shot of showing you how far up the boat it goes. Um, so it runs all the way through the blocks, creates tension on the line and then is right next to the cockpit. You can see that Rob's on dinner behind me, um, but these two guys are like wizards. The amount of information their brains hold is absolutely outrageous. I don't think between them is anything they don't know about sailing. We've got like a whizzy choppy thing and a... That's so funny, it's his favourite thing in the kitchen. You just pull a string and it chops while you shite up. Still no engineer though, we've still not had the engines looked at, which is... crucial. Yeah, that's about it for today. I'm going to eat my dinner, probably do some more lights and day shapes revision, and read my book and go to bed. So, I'll see you tomorrow. I actually did a full voiceover for this part of the episode, and realised I hadn't touched my mic on for the full two and a half minutes I was talking, and we're about to go out for dinner. I'm just going to have to do a talk over a montage of Ribadeo um, for this bit. 
Ripperdeo. Nothing to write home about. It's not the most exciting place I've ever been. It's got some really pretty Baroque buildings. The port is fine. It's quite quiet. So today we went to Decathlon because I wanted to pick up some resistance bands because I'm not really using a lot of my muscles and a lot of my body when I'm out on the boat and it's a little bit too much to be going trying to find gyms and things if and when we dock. So I went and got those and then I decided to just go on a bit more of a moochie moo uh, around the streets that we'd not been down quite as much and just have a look around. And then I went and found a tripod because I'm fed up of trying to balance my phone on random things when I'm trying to do these videos. And then I saw what I think is the best business placement ever. So people come through here to do a walk, like a pilgrimage, and this guy set up his foot clinic next to the hostel the walkers use. It's genius. Then I went to one of the local parks where I found out they feed all the stray cats there, so that's super cute. And then last but by no means least, they move all these logs right from the sea and they use these things to do it. And I can't help but see this every time I look at them. And then this evening I did the unthinkable, which was wash my hair and put some makeup on because we all went out for dinner to one of the places that's close to the marina and it was great. We all had gorgeous steaks and ended up eating so much that we ended up having to split a tiny dessert three ways. So there you have it. As far as a boat day goes, not very boaty, four out of ten on the boat front. Um, but everything else wise, self care wise, great day. Eight out of ten self care day. Cake, resistance bands, and cats. So tomorrow we have got the engineer come in and we'll probably be doing some odd jobs um to there's a big bug. Um Probably be doing some odd jobs ready to ready to go. I should close my hatch. The hatches have bug nets over them and I just didn't pull mine because I live in delusion where bugs don't exist. We got our engine serviced today, so they're all good to go for the rest of the trip now, which is excellent. For lunch, we went to a pulpo restaurant um, because it's one of the sort of classic dishes that they do here. I don't actually eat octopus. It's the one thing I don't eat. Um, I don't agree with eating anything that's sort of more intelligent than I am, even if it's a sea creature. So Anthony tried it for the first time, which was nice. Wasn't a huge fan. Um, so it's good to know that someone else won't be eating it again. The plan of action is to get out of here tomorrow after lunchtime and try and hit the corner before we start getting 30 knot winds. We're going to try and get to Muxia. It's about 100 nautical miles, so it should be doable within about a day. Yeah, I'm ready to get on the move again. It's felt like a long time to be docked up. But it has been, it's been nice. Like it's, we've had our coffee and cake every day and I very much intend to go tomorrow. And then it should just be a night in Muxia, wait for the weather to calm down. And all the way down to Jib, where we'll go and get Emily. Which will be really nice because she's been on holiday and I'm excited to see her. The other really good thing about being docked is I've been able to use the Starlink to do all of this and talk to my friends. Which has been good it's kind of nice to not be able to be contacted quite so freely when you're out on the, on the sea. I don't know, it kind of gives me a good excuse to just concentrate on what I'm doing. At the moment, I'm trying to decide whether I start doing my Yachtmaster Theory or if I give it a bit and get some more experience before I start buckling in to do that. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself when I'm just trying to learn, but I also know that to make any headway in this industry, it's feels like a minimum requirement now is to have a yacht master i think i can do it it's just i don't want to fail um i think i'm a fast learner but sailing it's all of my achilles heels all at once um so physics and maths and all of that good stuff however it keeps it interesting 
and I think that it will benefit me. Like the growth I'll get from this is more than I will get from doing the things I find easy. So that's something. I also today did uh, four and a half hours of e-learning for my next job. So I'm really fortunate. I met someone who put me onto a summer camp, essentially, in uh, the Caribbean. I wrangled a job as a first mate over there. So it means a lot of sailing, living on a catamaran, not too dissimilar to this one, for around 10 weeks in summer where we will be concentrating on sort of outdoor activities, teaching leadership skills and yeah, just having a really good time, really tapping into fun and growth with young people, which I really enjoy. It's the things that I I think I am good at. So it would be nice to pair this with a little bit more of my skill set and balance it out. So it's a lot to look forward to. I'm glad I had the opportunity now to be on a catamaran and sort of see how it handles differently to a monohull before I go over there. So yeah, it's exciting times ahead. I love this. Like I don't have a plan afterwards either. I get to just do whatever I want, <laughs> which can be scary, but you've just got to enjoy the experience of it. Like, I'm so fortunate to have harvested all the skills that I have to be able to do that and scary though it is yeah I think I need to really just settle into it and enjoy it because I know that if I was sat in an office job I wouldn't last there's too much to do outside and there's too many things to try so yes it's about to be a very interesting time in my life so I'm going to edit this up now and post it and then it means that the next however long that I don't have internet out at sea I can spend doing all of this all over again. Also this was only really supposed to be like so my dad could see me and like hear me speak and stuff um so thanks for <laughs> thanks for subscribing um yeah that's really cute I feel so supported like cheers everyone. <laughs>